Hello, this is Brett Etheridge, founder of Dominate the GMAT, and I'd like to work through a sample GMAT problem solving question involving geometry that one of my students brought to me earlier this week. Before I dive in, go ahead and press pause, give it a try yourself, and see how you do. All right. Well, there's a lot going on in this problem. Not only do we have to know how to do the geometry, but we also have to know the probability of something. And so that's a good place to start. On your scratch paper, ultimately, the answer to the question is going to be a probability outcome. And so you have to recognize the first fundamental rule of probability says the probability of something is the number of favorable outcomes, so the outcomes in our favor, over the total number of outcomes, right? And so in this case, what is that? Well, the question's asking, what is the probability that it will be inside the circle, right? In, or sorry, inside the triangle. So the favorable outcomes, the numerator is going to be whatever's inside the triangle. And so what we want to do is obviously we want to start by drawing a figure. And here we go. Here's our circle, right? And this is what's going on. And then we have this triangle with three equal sides, not a very good drawing, but nevertheless, we want to know what's the probability it's going to be inside this triangle. So that technically would be the area. So what we're really looking for is the area of the triangle out of, well, the whole circle, because they said they're going to choose a point from ra at random from inside the whole circle. So we have the area of the circle as the denominator. So we're choosing from inside the whole circle, but we want a point that's inside the triangle, and what's the chance that that's going to happen? Well, here's our answer. And so if we can just figure out the area of the triangle and the area of the circle, then we have our proportion or the, the, the probability that it will happen, and notice the answer choices all look like that. So here's what's going on, and we have our diagram drawn out, and we recognize, first of all, that we have a triangle of three equal sides. Well, what does that mean? Well, when we have a triangle of three equal sides, it's clearly an equilateral triangle, and so you want to go ahead and write in the fact that we have 60 degree angles because that may be important. All right? So we have 60 degree angles, and what do we want to do first? Well, we can either figure out the area of the circle or the area of the triangle. It's totally up to you. Let's go ahead and start with the area of the circle. I think we're going to find that's a little bit easiest. And the trick is you want to make up numbers because at the end of the day, rather than working in the abstract, let's just go ahead and make up a number four, the radius of the circle. Because isn't the area of a circle pi r squared? So the whole thing is going to be dependent on that radius. Well, we could act in the abstract and say that that radius is r, or we can just make up a number for r. Now remember my rules for making up numbers. You want to avoid 0, 1, or numbers in the problem. And so we'll avoid 0, 1. Why don't we let the radius be 2? Nice, easy number. You could choose anything you want. But if the radius is 2, then that means the denominator, or the area, is going to be pi 2 squared, or 4 pi. So here we have our denominator as 4 pi. Now, that's a completely arbitrary denominator because we chose a random number to equal r2. And yet, what do we notice when you look at the answer choices? We do have a few answer choices that have a denominator of 4 pi. Again, that doesn't mean they're absolutely going to be the only possible answer choices because, for example, in answer choice E, we may ultimately be able to reduce the final outcome. But it's a pretty good likelihood that well, we know for sure that it's going to have to be a multiple of 4 pi, and so it's very unlikely that the answer is going to be b. So if you want to get in the habit of eliminating some wrong answer choices, that's a good way to go. Now the harder part. How do we find the area of this triangle? Well, you should default to your common right triangles. And in this case, what do we notice? Well, we have 60 degree angles, so we're probably going to be working in the world of our 30, 60, 90 right triangles. And in fact, when we drew this radius out from the middle, we recognized we would be bisecting that angle, creating two 30 degree angles, right? And so if we drop an altitude down, it's not a pure altitude, but from here, if we create a right angle, we have created a 30, 60, 
90 right triangle with the hypotenuse of 2 that we already made up, now can we find the base of that triangle? Absolutely, because we know our template says that this must be 1, right? And then this must be the square root of 3. And so when we're looking for the area of the triangle now, the numerator, the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, right? Well, the base of this triangle, because this is also going to be root 3, is going to be 2 root 3. So, so far we have 1 half, 2 root 3, and then we need the height. Well, what's the height? Ah, well, the height is actually this whole thing. Well, what's that? Well, let's take a look at kind of the microcosm of our equilateral triangle. Here's what we have. We have oops, the height, and we know that we have root 3, we have root 3, right? We have 60 degrees here, we have 30 degrees here because we bisected it, we bisected it. And so all I've done is I've extracted the triangle to make it a little bit easier to figure out what's going on. And what do we notice here? Well, we can play this game all day long. We know the dimensions of a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So that if the short side of a 30, 60, 90 right triangle is root 3, then the long side is the square root of 3 times as large, which is going to be the square root of 9, which reduces to 3. Now we have our height, don't we? And so the area of our triangle is 1 half base times height, the base is 2 root 3, the height now is 3, so that that is 6 root 3 over 2, which reduces to 3 root 3, and that's all we can do for now. But this now, let's take this up here, becomes our numerator, right? And that becomes 3 root 3, and lo and behold, look at that. It actually matches answer choice C. Now, like I said, it just worked out beautifully because we happened to choose a radius that worked out nicely. If you had chosen a different radius, like radius equals 4 or radius equals 10 or whatever number you made up, you would still get the same probability. You would still get the same ratio of numerator to denominator. You just would have had to factor it to reduce it to an answer choice that looked like one of these answer choices, but always you would come out with the same outcome that the answer choice is C. So well done if you had gotten that. My guess is the trickiest part of this was figuring out the area of the triangle for you. Hopefully you see what I did. And ultimately I think it helps if in advance of starting to do the work, you write out exactly what it is we're going to have to find out. And once you figured out the probability portion of this, it became easy. We have to simply find the area of the triangle, the area of the circle, make up numbers, makes it a lot easier to do that, and you get the right answer. So a lot of geometry wrapped up in one. Again, well done if you got it. Study it. Learn your rules. And for more tricks and strategies, go to our website, dominatethegmat.com. Check out our blog. And I uh, appreciate you choosing Dominate the GMAT. Study hard. God bless, and we'll see you next time.